And on this video, I'll show you how I install my Riding Tombow 360X mirror dashcam. Now, I have previously reviewed this dashcam on the channel. If you guys want to see that review, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. I'll also put a link in the description down below to this dashcam in case you want to get one for yourself. So first, I'll show you the two potential ways that this dashcam can be mounted, which is with the Velcro straps or with the included direct fit kit. Then I'll show you the routing for each one of the cables, including the connections to the fuse box of the vehicle. Now I do want to point out that I like to disconnect the battery on my vehicle to make sure that there is no power on the car, and I only reconnect the battery for parts of the installation where I need to have power on it. But with that being said, let's get started. And I'll begin by mounting the mirror using the Velcro straps. And each strap is going to secure the mirror, one on each side. I'm going to put the strap through the little hoop, and then I'm going to loosely secure that. Now I am leaving the straps a little bit loose so I can center the front LCD mirror. Once I have centered that in place, I can fully tighten and secure the Velcro straps. But now let me show you the direct mount version. As you can see, my original mirror is secured with a screw that I can loosen and then I can simply slide the old mirror off. Then I can slide the new dash cam in and re-tighten that screw to secure the mirror dash cam in place. And now I can begin to route the main power harness, which as you can see, I am gently pushing the cables underneath the headliner of the vehicle, just using my hands. Now the smaller cable that is used for the backup to SSD drive feature, I'm gonna hide that underneath the visor. And I'll continue routing the power harness into the headliner of the vehicle towards the A pillar and then towards the fuse box of the vehicle. But it is important to notice that at this point, the cables are gonna run through areas that might have airbags on the vehicle and I have made a separate video showing the potential dangers that an installer faces when working around an airbag or putting cables over the airbags and how I get around that issue. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below in case you want to check that out. And this car doesn't have any airbags so I can just continue to route the cables into the trim of the car and then towards the outside as I head towards the fuse box and just using my fingers very gently pulling on the trim and pushing the cable in. I don't want to pull too hard and break something, so I'm taking my time, making sure that everything fits nice and smooth. And as I reach the fuse box, I'm gonna route the cable so they pop into that area. I'm gonna remove the fuse box cover, and then in this case, I'm gonna lift this plastic piece and the cables have now made it to the fuse box. Now I'm gonna put the GPS antenna on the lower corner of the windshield and I'm gonna route the cable towards the fuse box of the vehicle. And this cable is probably the easiest one to route because it's right next to the fuse box. And once that I have it here, I can connect the GPS antenna into the cable that is labeled GPS. Next is the rear camera extension cable, which I'm gonna connect into the cable that's labeled CAM. I'm gonna line up the keys and push the connectors in. Now I can take that rear camera extension and begin to feed it towards the rear of the vehicle. And you'll notice that I'm using the same techniques as I did before, gently lifting the trim with my fingers and pushing the cable gently into the car. Now some cable will have to go into the interior of the vehicle because we're coming from the fuse box and we're moving towards the interior of the car. And I'm gonna keep going all the way down till I reach the rear part of the vehicle, being very careful and being very gentle as I fit this cable into its location. Now at some point I'm gonna end up with a lot of excess extra cable and this is a good place that I like to use to hide that excess cable. I'm simply gonna push that in and just leave a little bit of cable left so I can connect the rear camera. And I can now install the rear camera on a clean windshield. I'm gonna peel this back and then I'm gonna center the camera, making sure that it's gonna be free of any obstructions and then hold the camera against the windshield until the double-sided tape sticks. Now I can connect the rear camera to the rear camera extension cable and begin to hide any leftover cable using the same technique as before, just using my fingers, hiding it under the headliner of the car. Next up is the optional proximity sensor, which I chosen to install in the front windshield. And it has double-sided tape in the back, which I can peel and then making sure that my windshield is clean, I can find that spot that I want and then secure the proximity sensor to the windshield until the tape fully attaches. Now I can hide the cable for the proximity sensor, same process as before, 
pushing the cable into the headliner of the car with my fingers and routing the cable down towards the fuse box of the vehicle. And once the cable reaches the fuse box, I can connect the cable to the other cable label proximity sensor, matching the keys and pushing these connectors in together. Moving over to the power box, I have already installed fuse tabs on this hardwired kit and the fuse tabs matches the fuse size of my vehicle. And if you're curious to see how I attach the fuse tabs to a hardwired kit, I have already made a video showing that process in great detail, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. And I'll begin by finding the locations for these two wires. One of the wires is labeled 12 volts and the other wire is labeled ACC. And to find the locations of the wire, a voltmeter could be used, but I like to use this little probe because it allows me to probe signal handily. One of the ends of the probe is going to go to ground, which is a metallic portion of the car, and then the other end of the probe allows me to poke around and look for power. And for the 12 volt wire, I have decided to use this fuse spot. As you can see, it has power all the time, even when the car is off. And for the ACC wire, I have decided to use this fuse spot. Notice how it has no power when the car is off. However, when the car is running or the key is in the accessory position, there is power on this fuse spot. And now that I know which fuses I'm going to use, I'll begin by removing the first fuse and I'll take that fuse and transfer it to the fuse tab, inserting it into the bottom position. And fuse tabs have only one correct orientation. This is the blade that has to go to power. And if I probe the top part of the fuse spot, notice that there is no power. But if I probe the bottom, this side has power. Now I know the correct orientation for the fuse tab. I'm gonna insert it with the outside blade matching the side that I found power on. And now I can repeat the process for the next fuse. I'll remove the fuse and transfer it over to the fuse tab, inserting it into the bottom position. Now I can probe the fuse spot to look for power. There is no power on the top contact. Next, I probe the bottom contact. This side has power. Now I can insert the fuse tab with the outer blade matching the side I found power on. But it is important to remember that the actual fuse spot locations for the 12 volt wire and the ACC wire will vary from car to car. And I have made a separate video showing how I find the location for 12 volts and ACC on any vehicle. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. And the last wire is ground, which I'm gonna connect to this place right here. I simply loosen the bolt and I can slide the terminal underneath it and then I can re-tighten the bolt again. Next, I'll connect the hardwire cable to the cable labeled power harness. I'll match the connector keys and lock the connectors. Finally, I can secure any loose cables with zip ties and then reinstall the fuse cover. And the installation of the Tombow 360X is now complete. Well, here's a bonus tip. You may have noticed that the hardwired kit, in addition to the three wires that I connected, has one additional wire that is green in color and labeled reverse trigger. This wire is used to enable the optional parking assist function on the mirror dash cam. And I have made a separate video showing how this wire is connected to the reverse tail lights of my vehicle to enable parking assist. Link to that video in the description down below. And if you guys have any other questions regarding the installation of the Riding Tombow 360X mirror dash cam, please put that in the comments down below. I'll also put a link down there to this dash cam in case you want to get one for yourself. And if you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more cool car gadgets coming up for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.